Hey, what's going on guys? Money Making Joey back here making another video and this video is going to be quite interesting because I want to compare like the old school days. Like for a lot of us out here, it really feels like it's been a long time. I would say like we've been living in this world with Uber and Lyft for what the last 10 to 12 years, maybe 11 years, something like that. But Prior to there being these apps, anything known as Uber and Lyft, going back into, you know, like the early 2000s, even in, we can go back further than that. We can actually go into like the 1980s, 1990s, where we used cab companies. We called the cab company and they dispatched out a vehicle to us. Now, Unless you're in a, a big city, you know, small town, but you know what? Some big cities actually have this also because back in those days, nine times out of 10, the vehicle that was coming to pick you up was a very old vehicle, probably was 15 to 20 years old. It made noise as the driver drove up the street. The inside was, was a little dirty, had a lot of wear and tear. But this driver that drove that vehicle, and I want to point out some facts about money-wise because I, I want to educate some of the, the young people, younger people that's in the rideshare industry, maybe, you know, in their 20s. I'm in my 30s, and I actually, uh, my father, who I've mentioned in previous videos, he's a mechanic, and he also drives in the rideshare industry part-time. But, um... In his journey, he actually worked at a cab company in Long Island. I'm not sure if this was the 1980s. Might have actually been the 90s, actually. But um, he would work there, and he serviced their fleet of vehicles. Occasionally, you know, on a Saturday night when it was really busy, they might have had him drive one of the vehicles. But there was very... There was something very interesting that, you know, he mentioned to me about the cab industry back then compared to what's going on now with Uber and Lyft. The interesting thing that he told me, which, you know, I'm sure all of us knew, the drivers that worked for these cab companies did not own the vehicles that they drove. The vehicles belonged to the cab companies. And the way it would work was that the, the, the cab driver would come to the dispatch center, pick up the vehicle and go out on an eight hour shift, 12 hour shift, whatever the case may be. And whatever that driver made while he was out, he would split it equally 50-50 with the cab company. The only thing that the driver would have to do is bring that company vehicle back full. It was a full tank of gas when he received it. So gas is on the driver. And when you think about that compared to the industry standard, I guess you can say now that the rideshare industry has created where you have drivers taking, in all actuality, I know Lyft is saying 70% and hey, that's cool. But the reality of the situation is that when we start taking out their commercial insurance, their fees and everything like that, the reality is, is that Uber and Lyft drivers are walking away way under 50%. We're under 50%, which means that we're under the norm of the industry standard. Which, in all reality, we should be way above the industry standard due to the fact that we own the vehicles. The actual rideshare companies, Uber and Lyft, they do not own any of the vehicles that actually services its customers. So, we're really in a lose-lose situation. Because even like what I mentioned prior with commercial insurance... The driver did not have the responsibility of insurance. That fell specifically on the cab company. The driver got 50%. If, if he went out in a 12-hour shift and he earned 1000 bucks, he would put $500 in his pocket minus the gas. Let's say a tank of gas, tank and a half of gas, whatever. Way better scenario than what we have in the rideshare industry because now 
If you give me under 50%, let's say 45% even, then now I still have the cost of the vehicle. I have to purchase it. I have to maintain it. I have to change the oil. They break. And then now these ride share companies, what's also important to point out is they require you to have newer vehicles depending on what category, Uber X, Uber Black, Comfort, whatever. I think like Uber X, you have to be like 2000, can't be like 15 years older, whatever the case may be, which is important to point out because when you look at all of these different cab companies from back in the day, if they bought a vehicle in 1990, in 2010, 20 years later, that same vehicle was on the road. It is way cheaper over the long run to buy good vehicles and just maintain them. You can put 300, 400,000 miles on them. We could swap out the engine. We can swap out the transmission. It's gonna be still cheaper than buying a new fleet. We as Uber and Lyft drivers, unfortunately, don't have that luxury because our vehicles are expected to maintain a higher quality, I guess you can say, which, you know, it's kind of also one of the bad things that I hate about the rideshare industry because the reality of it is, is that for the amount of money that we're making driving the customers for these platforms, there's nothing higher end or luxury about it. The reality of it is, is that I can easily go to the auction and pick up a what's considered as a hoopty, a, a, a older model car for five to six thousand dollars. It already has over a hundred thousand miles. I could easily go ahead and skip out on buying a new vehicle, skip out on the car payments, and you know, just drive an older model car all the way up until it has 300, 400,000 miles. And by doing that, what's important to note is that when you eliminate car payments, you will also get some cheaper insurance. You will also have, you know, hopefully a little bit less on mechanic bills. The reality of it is, is that you become just a tad bit more profitable inside of driving for Uber and Lyft. You guys can crunch the numbers. Don't even debate me on it, it's the honest truth. We all got these car payments. Just imagine what your ride share journey would look like if you didn't have car payments. That's the reality of it. So I'm actually gonna leave this video here. Do me a favor, guys, get subscribed to the channel. It's really important if you guys haven't done so already. And give this video a thumbs up if you guys have found value from it. Money Making Joey, I'm out of here and I will see you guys in the next one.